So let me show you how we're outfitted today. <clears throat> it's one problem. If I could figure out how to strap that weed eater on, that'd be a nice thing for somebody to sell on Amazon. Of course, who who does what I do? So let me pull around and get a selfie here. So you can see we got the backpack fully packed. Everything I think I'm going to need for all eventualities: bug netting, water, packing, bug you know bear spray, everything. And I think it's going to be about a two, two, two mile hike to get up to the trail, just to get started. And then from there, I, I don't know how long I'll get today. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep uh, last night. But I do want to talk a little bit about resilience, because that's kind of what these videos are about. Let's uh, swing around to show you what I'm seeing here. And, uh, okay. So, you know, this is what I was saying. If you're a backpacker, just come on down in here. And hike up this road why why cut through the forest over here which is what I did it took me three days just to get through it and who knows you know how much worse that trail has gotten and by by uh, April May you know when the growing season hits that'll be unhikable so uh, and this trail up here when we get there's gonna be unhikable but uh, resilience what do I mean by resilience that's kind of the new buzzword on YouTube you don't watch YouTube, you, you probably haven't heard it. But uh, you know what, what they're looking at is financial resilience, uh, uh, health resilience, um, you know, every, everything you can possibly think of. I just want to kind of talk about the things that I've done. See, here's here's what I'm talking about. Got a lot of a lot of water along the way. Luckily, with the hikers, don't care. Just go right through the mud. And uh, so, financial resilience just means assets now even assets i really expect that we're going to have a uh, real estate crash so you know a lot of people say well invest in real estate well if you're in texas or florida you know the free states and that's literally literally what we think we're coming to is free states versus uh unfree you know uh, like new york and california um because people are moving out of there to get to the free states and uh the real estate prices around here imagine are going to be pretty what's the word resilient and uh but in new york if you're there or california your real estate prices are going to drop and if we do have a crash they're going to crash really bad a lot of a lot of rental property there is is uh they're not getting the rents they used to that three thousand dollars that people used to pay that's low in, in new york city i hear that's down to 2500 now a month which is still a hell of a lot of money when you think about twenty five hundred dollars a month so there's financial resilience and, you know, maybe silver gold, but boy, you've, you've already missed that boat. Watch for a dip. I mean, you know, they, they artificially uh, manipulate those prices. So you never know. You might get a, you might get a drop in the uh, silver and gold prices. Uh, I'd say if silver goes below 24 again, yeah, it might be worth picking up some. And what I do is I buy those Sprott ETFs uh, out of Canada. Don't trust the COMEX. Don't buy GLD or SLV. That's all paper contracts. And I know for sure they don't have the gold and the silver uh, by a hundredfold to actually cover uh, those calls if they come in. Because, see, you can take redemption on silver and gold physically uh, through those paper contracts. But if they don't have it, you're just screwed. And then they'll say, oh, geez, gosh, we violated the law. The U.S. government will give them a slap on the wrist. They'll pay a fine of a oh, billion dollars. But in manipulating the prices, they made a trillion. So what do they care? All right, so that's uh, that's on the financial resilience. Let's not talk about that too much. Uh, now, what have I spent the last three years doing since I got to Florida? Quite a bit. Oh, man. See, it gets heavy after a while. Uh, quite a bit of work on the house. You know, a lot of people, when I first got here, I was playing a lot of golf because that's kind of your dream. You know, you retire. Oh, geez, you know, let's get the golf membership and play three times a week. And that's kind of what I saw in all the people, the, the old people. And I say old, I'm old, you know, but I mean, I, I try to stay young by doing stupid stuff like we're doing today. And, uh, but they, you know, they, they just spend all their time, pickleball, golf, uh, a little bit of tennis, you know, you know, water volleyball. I mean, and it's great. I, you know, you got to be active. You got to balance your life. But at the same time, you know, what were they doing to make their homes resilient? And uh, this is uh, this is a phrase I want you to understand. Just like me, with this Florida Trail is 
And Rudy, he's dead now, unfortunately. He was a friend of mine when I first got here to Florida. He, you know, because I was working out in the rock on my house. And I get out there an hour or two or three and I had the sawhorses up and the neighbors were looking at me, you know, and luckily the HOA didn't come down on me. We'll get to the HOA in a minute. And uh, so it took me months. And uh, I remember I get discouraged, just like hiking this trail. You just get discouraged. You're like, oh, geez, I've been to this section three days in a row. Well, not in a row, of course. I mean, three days and... I still haven't even cut my way through <laughs> 314. By the way, I, I did look at the map, and that's what that's going to do, I'm hoping, if I'm reading it correctly. Because like I said, there is no map. If you go online, there's no dotted line that says the trail goes this way. I'm just following the orange markers. But it does say, that I found a worded description, and it does say that the, uh, the section that I'm cutting out today will connect back with 314. Because, let me get my finger back in the picture here so you know you saw 314 it's going this way and I don't know how far it goes to the the east okay but it does kind of move to the north and so by hiking this portion of the Florida Trail we're kind of cutting across to get back to 314 and uh, boy when I get there that'll be a happy moment because that is actually there's a there's a bar there called like the 66 bar or something I just saw it it's kind of a I guess it's a famous place and uh, so I can't wait to, I'm hoping they got outside uh, dining and, and whatnot. And I'll just enjoy, enjoy that moment for sure if I, if I ever get there. Uh, well, I will, of course. Um, so get him, get him, get him back to, to where we were on the house. So he said, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. And that's what we're doing. We're eating an elephant one bite at a time because this is, if they haven't maintained the Alcala National Forest portion of the trail, uh, you know, who knows how far I'll get this year. You know, of course, i got to quit around April. Let's see, March, April. You know, might be able to do some some cutting and hiking in May. But uh, I, I'm certainly not going to get all 1,500 miles done this year. <laughs> way, way, not even close. So, I'm, hell, I'm only getting a couple miles each day cutting the trail in. So... Uh, so what have I done? So I split my time working on the house and, you know, I'm trying to get my house more resilient. And, you know, what did I do? I put a lot of wood up in the attic for storage. I put in attic stairs to make it easier. I, we uh, put on a new roof so that if a hurricane, we wind mitigated the attic so that if you do get bad weather, so we're just kind of prepare for the worst, pray for the best. You know, that's, that's what you do in everything, you know, and especially stocking up. I mean, you know, we had... You know, I hate to say it, I, I, I was one of those people who did stock up. Now, not hugely, but I bought toilet paper back when I saw the virus coming. Of course, you know, I was just stocking up on everything, you know. Clorox, hand sanitizer. You know, we had all that stuff for, for months before it got back in the stores. And, you know, it's, it's kind of back now. But, man, if we had another financial crisis or a real estate crisis or the stock market crisis, which I think all of those are coming, you know, where's your resilience? So now we get last, probably the last thing I'll talk about in this video is uh, food, okay? One of the, one of the great uh, crimes, and, and also transportation, one of the great crimes against uh, humanity in the United States was uh, when Scott's Fertilizer, they talked everybody into getting rid of, you know, back in the 30s and 40s, especially after the Great Depression, people had gardens, in their yards where you could grow vegetables Ooh, imagine growing your own damn food can't imagine what that would be like you know and so they convinced everybody or the actually i think they bought off the politicians and a lot of laws i mean look at my hoa i tried to have a raised garden with the cedar uh area that was going to be very beautiful it wouldn't even wouldn't even kill the grass and uh they turned it down. Oh, you can't grow vegetables. Oh, God. We don't want you growing your own food. You know, they've been brainwashed, man. Everybody's been brainwashed. And, uh, God, and especially the older generation. Because for, you know, look, what, since the 40s? I mean, a lot of those people were born right around that time that I, that I live in the community with. And they just don't know any better. They think, well, it's more important to make the community look nice for property values than to allow people to have a vegetable garden. And what they don't understand is you can grow a vegetable garden and make it look very, very nice. You know, just take, for example, what's happening in Arizona. 
because they have water shortages. They, they took out those grass lawns that they were wasting water on and they put in natural habitat. You know, it's the same thing you want to do here, you know. In Florida, we shouldn't be having crabgrass lawns that we have to water with sprinkler systems and stupid stuff like that. And it's going to come to that. Once, once, the, once the crap hits the fan, you know, everybody's going to have to go back to, to that type of living. And, uh, but, you know, until that happens, you know, do you want to wait for it? Oh, hell no. So what am I looking at? I'm talking to real estate agents. And what I want to find, well, you can see, whew, let's just take a break. You can see there's a lot of land still, even though we got we got 800 people a day moving to Florida. I'm, my God, I hope they're not Democrats and they turn this into a blue state. I mean, then we won't be free anymore. I, you know, right now we got no restrictions and uh, yeah, we, and that's another reason that I'm out here because the virus is moving around, but the, you know, the vaccine is coming and, uh, oh man, I just, I keep getting off on a tangent. Well, and that's what resilience, here's another aspect of resilience you know is uh what are you what are you doing during the virus okay a lot of people they were really you know i understand you want the social interaction and it, hell i'm up on parlor you know and i i've really enjoyed that you know never got on social media before but uh it is good to be uncensored and free to talk about what you your passion is or, or whatever you want i put some of these videos up on parlor for goodness sake you know who cares and I'm not getting, you know, if I was on YouTube, oh my God, YouTube is just, I mean, this is something that should be frightening to everybody, the censorship. I mean, we've never had censorship in this country. If you say the word hydroxychloroquine, you get censored on YouTube. If you present a doctor that has a contrarian opinion as to what's good to fight the virus, uh, it gets censored, you know. If you express, uh, in fact, they were censoring things about the election. If you talk about uh, for uh, well, I shouldn't say the word, but if you talk about how the election was uh, convoluted, let's just say, you know, you get censored. So, I mean, this is very frightening. We shouldn't be censoring free speech. And that's what Parler's about and Rumble, so if you want to go there. Uh, let's see, getting back. I, so, you know, I worked on the house and spent 50000 And I understand a lot of people, you know, that's a, that was a crap load of money. I never anticipated in a million years when I bought the Florida house that I would be spending that kind of money. And I did most all of the work myself but look at where we are i mean the house is in perfect shape i got the cars in perfect shape we're well stocked because of all my work on storage and buying shelving and you know just getting resilient and uh you know that's that's another thing that these these this is about okay not only am i getting my body in shape i'm making sure i've got the gear to get out and enjoy nature because where else do you want to be during a pandemic? Do you want to go? And I was, oh, I was talking about the social aspect. So a lot of these people, you know, they got to get in the pool. And when things opened up, I mean, luckily our governor said, you know what? Use your common sense. Well, oh, man, we're getting there. And uh, so people are doing pretty good. But they still went back to uh, pickleball and they went back to uh, water volleyball. And those are kind of close quarters. Uh, and so we have had people in the community get the disease. Now, with that said, and you're talking mostly 60, 70, 80 year, and even 90 year old people, I only know of two people that have died from the virus. And did they really die from the virus? Not really. One guy had a major heart condition and was already in bad shape, and the other guy had diabetes and the same thing, a heart condition. And uh, yeah, the virus was the final catalyst that put them in the grave and uh, but everybody and we got a lot of people that are getting sick and so that's why people are afraid um, but most everybody has done very well uh, some with just headaches I mean you don't want it I ain't gonna lie wear a mask and you when you're indoors you know try to eat outside unless you're you know in a, in a state where you can't eat outside or if you do eat it tonight, which is what I do at the VFW, make sure you're eight feet. You know, I'm not talking six feet. I'm talking eight, ten feet, which is what we do at the VFW. You know, we, they wipe down everything. They sanitize everything. As soon as you get up, man, you know, if you had the virus, they, they wipe the counter down. So, you know, there's precautions that you can take. Uh, of course, you can't wear a mask and drink a beer or have a hot dog. You know, it's just, there's ways you got to go about this that make sense. All right, I guess this video is probably getting long, but I hope you're recognizing this. 
that is the tree stand where the trail that I spent three days cutting through right there comes out and so like just coming up this road how long did it take me hell you might as well just put the orange dots on these trees and just bring the trail up this way if you're not going to maintain it what's the point you know what's the point just just hike down if you're a backpacker hike down 314 and just come up this dirt road like I'm doing uh, if you're if you're a hiker you can hike uh, that portion of the trail the, to the left here just past uh, Marshall Swamp Trailhead if you want because I've cut it in until March but next year if uh, the, I don't think that the maintenance is going to be done like it has been in past years and uh, hopefully we'll make some progress uh, I'll be back the trailhead soon and uh, we'll get our next video there and that'll be a different video than this one because this is just going to be a, a, and that's another thing I you know I'm learning about videos it's real easy to talk a lot and make a video and that's why these radio talk show hosts they got their podcasts and all that you wouldn't believe the work it requires me to take small clips you know I got to show you this I got to show you that I got to show you this and then you, I don't know why it is and maybe I'm doing something wrong but it doesn't sort those clips so then I got to go in I got to move them around move them around and I try now I'm trying to add a little bit of text to them yeah I'm learning as I go but it's a it takes a long time to make a backpacking video or a hiking video uh, now this video will be as easy. All I did was talk for a while. All right, let's get to where we're going to start cutting in.